Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek of an Iron Pench and welcome back to the somewhat unplanned third part of our Halloween special game because I didn't think it was going to take this long to play. So yes, we're back with a third part of Monster Loves You. There we are and last time out we faced death. As a monster we faced the end of our life but instead of turning back into the slime from which we came, we kind of hardened up, if you like, the shell kind of uh, became all tough and gnarly and we became an elder. We became an elder monster, so we didn't die and go back to being the slime. We are now like this until I don't know when. I don't know when. I don't know kind of what the uh, what the lifespan of a monster is now they're an elder. I'm not entirely sure. And then we've come to this new place here. So we've got a new sort of uh, location and there are a couple of new little bar things here. So in 14 days, something is going to happen. I don't know what it is, but something will happen. And this is the opinion of monsters on humans, I believe. So how well monsters think of humans. And that, yeah, if we come out of that, and that is what humans think of monsters. They are both quite low. They are both very low. So we have got to do what we can to try and raise these numbers, I imagine, to stop an all-out big inevitable horrible war from happening and all the monsters and humans fighting and lots of death and trauma and sadness and tears and all that kind of stuff. So let's start doing some stuff. Let's start doing some of these. So let's journey to Carmen. I'm going to assume Carmen is a human city or something. I don't really know, but let's have a look anyway. Let's journey to Carmen. Um... Well, there's a couple of nice hugging kind of monster things there. Let's have that one. That looks nice. You're hiding in a shiny wood building. Two humans are holding hands in front of another human. Aha! Am I in a church? I'm in a church, aren't I? He makes a lot of noise about a witness. The other two look around, disappointed at the empty room. Pull your hat over your head and offer to be a witness. Quietly seek out another human to be a witness or sabotage their doings. I'm going to pull my hat over my head and offer to be a witness. Go humans! Go humankind. They're delighted. The humans all take turns talking. Ah. Um, okay. And talking. Ah. And talking. Ah. And talking. Yes. Eventually the two holding hands make kiss faces at each other. They sign a paper and hand it to you. Take the pen and do the same. You make a pretty squiggle. Beautiful. The pair thanks you profusely and you bow. Whoops. The hat fell off. Oh no. I've been exposed. Are they going to be happy? The humans gasp. But you... Oh, humans' view of monsters has gone up by 10. But you stand your ground, unafraid. After a moment, they thank you. Okay. Oh, no, it didn't go up 10. I thought it said 10. It went up 18%. Oh, that was jolly good. That was very good. Okay, let's do one of these politic things then. Um, There's a sword and a stone. I've got to go for a sword and a stone. That sounds fun. The spine doctor looks up from her current patient. She's working a human knife free of a younger monster's ribs. Humans are dangerous. So we can watch and listen, try to change the subject, distract them all, or show them humans are unstoppable. I'm going to watch and listen. I'm going to err uh, sort of, uh, on the side of caution there. She says, humans, no claws. So they made that their own. Oh no, so they made their own. Sorry, awful thing, knife wound. Takes twice as much milkweed to patch up as a jaguar attack. Best steer clear, I say. Show that your claw, uh, claws are as sharp as any knife or explain explain how they're not all about fighting. Yeah, that's Mora's, isn't it? That's Mora's, the lovely monster. Yeah, we're not all about fighting. We just saw them getting married. We just saw them. Monster's view of humans plus eight. Okay, I see the way this is going. Okay, success. That scary knife you explain is used to spread jam on bread. Real knives are much worse. The spine doctor nods, a little shocked. Okay, so politic... This one increases the opinions of monsters and humans. And Carmen is presumably the human city or land or whatever. And that will increase the human opinion of monsters. Right, okay, so that's monsters and humans. That's humans on monsters. Let's try and get that one up. Let's try and raise this up a little bit. Um, okay, pointy finger monster. Let's go for you. Gritman shouts, might makes right. Prufrock replies, not always. We should talk more like the humans do. Okay, I agree with Prufrock. Debate is powerful. Show them that might makes right is wrong. Requires ferocity. Or humans talk. Show them how monsters do it. But let's do this. I think we've got quite a lot of honesty. Let's go down that route. I agree. Debate is powerful. Rolly roll. You explain how humans can come to a decision as a group without slashing or biting anyone. The other elders are intrigued by your words. Go on. Another 18. When you start describing voting, they lose interest, but they agree that words hold great power. <laughs> so voting bores them, but they kind of get the idea. Okay, let's do another one of these. Let's try and get one of them over 50%. 
Uh, let's have Happy Face Monster. Yay, Happy Face! Mupsy Morel, that's the newspaper person, isn't it? Outlines a plan for defence against the humans. Fruitcake. I've seen it, friends. Every year the humans offer it to each other, but nobody wants it. She can't possibly think, but fruitcake is a weapon. Okay. Oh, she does. Mupsy goes on. If they fear it so, it must be a weapon, perhaps a deadly poison. One we can steal and turn against the humans if we need to. Explain the truth. Human fruitcake is delicious. Humans give fruitcake as gifts, sort of. Or, yeah, let's anger them by stealing the cakes. Well, no, don't anger them. I don't want to anger them. I want to make peace. Um, no, human fruitcake is delicious. I think I am quite honest. That should be okay. You don't have a sample for them to try, but everyone listens. You're known for telling the truth. Mupsy seems upset. Oh, well. Too bad for Mupsy. Another 18. Oh, that's very good. So, yeah, my stats are actually pretty good. So, yeah, I'd like it if it actually popped up at the bottom. So, 51 for that. Cleverness is 100. Okay, that's fine. That's very good. Ferocity is only 12. So, let's not do anything that involves ferocity. Honesty is 86. So, honesty and kindness. Yeah, honesty, kindness and cleverness were okay. Bravery, yeah, it's only about halfway through. So, yeah, we might struggle on some bravery rolls. Okay, let's do another politic. Let's try and get that up. Um, let's pick zzz, let's pick sleepy side sort of things. You're just concluding a thrilling speech to the other elders. Finally, something goes smoothly. Snork, snark, rock, rock, snork. What in snack? Snack, sorry. What in snack is that noise? Old Hamrak fell asleep in the middle of your speech again. His pig-like snout and four nostrils give his snores a poignant yet thunderous quality. I'm gonna cough gently. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hamrag, could you uh, uh, wake up a little bit there? Thank you. Your better, your better success whispering at the moon. Hamrag keeps snoring. Talk louder to be heard over the snoring. Okay, Hamrag wakes up. He looks around and says, You know, humans are pretty nasty. They sharpen rocks and cut things with them. Also, they kill each other all the time. Explain that humans don't do that anymore. Establish authority by fighting Hamrag or agree with Hamrag that other humans are primitive creatures. Okay, honesty. I'm pretty good at that. Let's give that a go. Another 18. You remind everyone that Hamrag's information is far out of date. Humans forge knives now and they only rarely kill each other. The old snouter says, suppose you're right. Okay, that's up to 82%. If we get another one of those sorted, if we just get another one, that will get it up to 100% because we get 18, it seems, for each one. I don't quite know why we get 18 for each one, but there we go. Well, let's journey to Carmen. Let's try and do one of these. All right, there's a skull. There's a skull. I guess it's a human skull. You see bolts of lightning hit a strange rod on a roof and investigate. From inside the house, you hear someone shout, Live! Live! Mwah! Followed by maniacal, maniacal sorry, laughter. What's going on? You listen at the window and hear a maniacal rant. This human is building a creature out of other humans. Dead humans. That sounds familiar. Consider what you've heard of such things. Stop the human from making the creature or help the human. Okay, let's consider what we've heard of such things. Someone did this a while back in the mountains and they made a creature, right? But it was more like a monster and it did some bad things. And in the end, a lot of monsters got killed because of it. Okay, I am going to stop him. I am going to stop him from making his monster. It might damage our reputation, you know, the humans versus monsters reputation. But we've got nine days left to bring that back. So let's do this. His plan's bad for the humans who live here. It'll make things hard on your fellow monsters, most likely. You set your mind to stopping him, but how? Cleverness. Find a way to sabotage the apparatus. Yay! Upon consideration, you decide to stop the flow of lightning at the source. As you snap the rod in two, the lights in the house go dark. From inside, the human lets out a wail. Time to go. Human's view of monsters plus 18. More humans smash down the door below and discuss the matter with the shouty one. They have pitchforks and torches. One nods to you. You did as a boon. Okay. Okay, this is going terrifyingly well. I've got eight days left. Let's get another one of these. See if we can raise that up a little bit more. Um, let's do sort of surprised, ooh, face. Smoke, glow, crying. A human house is on fire. There's one small human child outside. And is that a human baby inside? Where are the fire humans with their big red engine? You can hear their engine howling, but it probably won't get here before the house collapses. Okay, I'm going in. Take action. I'm a monster. I've got a hardened shell. The little human skin is burned and its howls are weaker by the second. The heat is so fierce it's already starting to hurt you. Muster the courage to get the baby out of the house. Give of yourself to shield the baby from harm. Or don't let the child go to waste. Eat it. Uh, if I was a terrible monster then yes I would do that. But no. Now Braver I've only got 50-50. Kindness I've got a lot. 
I'm going to injure myself, but yeah, let's do it. You felt the fire is inside you now, as well as all around you. You spit up as much slime as you can to protect the baby, but it stops breathing. No! Keep the child safe. Keep the child safe. You force what little breath you have left into the human child's lungs, shielding its body with your own as the flames grow hotter. Keep at it. It coughs and spits and starts to wail. Humans are putting out the fire now, and you stagger to them, holding the baby for them to take. It clasps your claw with one tiny hand. Oh, I saved a baby. Humans run away. Advanced neurosurgery plus 10. And I got some monsters. Why have I got advanced neurosurgery plus 10? <laughs> it's a nice skill to have. Behind you, the humans cheer. If only every human felt this way about every monster. Okay. Okay, so I'm a little bit burnt, and now I've got advanced neurosurgery, which is somewhat unexpected, but there we go. Uh, right, let's try and get another bit of this up. Um, which one do we choose? What about upside down monster? Why the heck not? What is this place? You're in a dark, dank, woody room that smells like old jaggery. Mosey on in. Okay. A human sits at a long counter. Ah, I'm in the pub. <laughs> and drink what well, looks like foamy cider. They seem sad. And a little confused. Ah, a drinking place. After a bit, you see that there's a stool open. So you climb up and plop down on it. One of the humans starts muttering about his problems. So can the human see what you are? Get out of here. Strike up a conversation or throwing contest. Break the liquor bottles with darts and billiards. No, that's not good. Let's try and talk to the human. Let's have a little chat with him. My wife just took my jellyfish and my dog just ran away. Oh, oh, your jellyfish has gone. I feel for you, sir. He goes on and on about what sounds like a pretty awful situation. Listen on. He seems so sad. Or give him some gentle but tough love. Now, let's listen on. I've got quite a lot of kindness. I should be all right at that. I keep listening. Clamping down on the urge to try and solve his problems before he's done complaining about them. Keep listening. He goes on and on, calling you Mac. He talks about pigskins and some sort of a bowl that he lost. Pigskins in a bowl. Uh, okay, I'm not really following what... Oh, does he mean Super Bowl? Oh, do they... Ah, did they lose the Super Bowl? Is that is that what it is? So pigskins... Pigskins might be the, the ball, possibly. And the bowl could be the Super Bowl? I don't know. Offer to help him find the bowl. He laughs. Though it looks like he won't find it, he seems happy after talking to you. The doctor is in! Yes. He finishes his last drink and gives you a little pointing salute. You monsters is good people. <gasps> Look at this. Can I just quit now? Can I just quit while I'm ahead? Right, let's do a politic. Let's try and get the monster's opinion up a bit. Let's try the bishy-bashy kind of explodey thing. Canilo Aslet, electrical genius, holds his abacus, turning the rocks for you and the other elders to see. Okay, take a closer look. The calculations don't lie. All humans find out about monsters in two months. These figures are rock solid. Literally, we should prepare new hiding places. So I can challenge his logic with hedology. <laughs> Have I got headology? I don't know. We don't know enough to predict their actions or agree. No, I've got cleverness. I've got vast amounts of cleverness. Let's go for that. You raise one claw and clear your throat. <clears throat> They've known about us forever, though. They tell stories of us to their children every generation. Rolly roll. You go on. And yet, they've never risen up to destroy us all. I don't think it's going to happen this generation either. It's a load of swamp gas. That'll get them. Monsters view of humans is maxed. Swamp gas? Canelo swears. I don't account for that. And because in hand, he departs to recalculate his uh, calculations. Okay. Now, what's the point of doing politics again? I don't want to do any more. I've got five days left. Can I just have five days off? That's at 92. That's at 100. Can I not just spend some time in the pub? I don't know. Let's go to Carmen then. Let's do one more of these. Um, hanging off the wall, monster. What's going on there? You watch as an elderly human tries to fix his house. He looks up at the leaky roof with a sigh. It starts to rain and goes inside. How bad is the leak? Looks like a trickle of water will get into the attic from this storm. It might do some damage to the human's house. He also left his tools out. So steer clear is too dangerous. Brave the rain. Kindly protect his tools from the rain. It's only letting in some of the rain. Fix it. Let's kindly protect his tools from the rain. Let's make sure that that's at least done. Hark! Glap! Gloop! Glorp! You cover the tools to your finest slime. As you leave, you notice the human at a window looking down at his slimy tools. Hope he appreciates the protective cocoon. And he does. He scratches his head. But you're fairly sure he's smiling. Okay. Right, now I don't want to do anything. I have I have become amazing. Now I do not wish to do anything at all. Can I not just utterly stand back and do nothing? Okay, fine. We'll have to do two more of these each then. Uh, all right, a bowl. Jaggery drink, uh, drinks deep from a jar of cider. He belches and the air goes wavy. 
watch the ferocious elder as he drinks some more. Jaggery raises one claw. Humans, humans are stupid, lazy, worth a stupid, and I'll fight any monster who says otherwise. Okay, so disagree. They can be altruistic and generous. No, smart humans bought a cider, or mention that you've seen stupid humans drink themselves into sickness. Um, I'm going to go for the kindness one. I mean, cleverness is more likely to succeed, but kindness I've got like 92 or something. So we'll try kindness. Drawing on your own experience with giving and helping other monsters, you select several excellent examples of human kindness. It's really just a question of knowing your subject. Jaggery himself is too tipsy to consider it, but everyone else is quite impressed. Okay. So it didn't go down. So now my goal is to just maintain that, is it? Uh, okay, let's go. Let's journey to Carmen. Let's deal with some humans. Let's do the peery around the corner thing. What's that? You sneak up to an open window. A human sits on an overstuffed chair. Her back is to a desk covered in... Wait a minute, it's maps with red X's on them. Ooh, treasure maps. They're showing off locations of the monster towns. Oh no, along with a badly drawn sketch of a monster with a knife stuck through it. What to do? Alter the maps to teach her something, confront her, even though she could kill you, or teach the human a lesson with violence. Let's try and alter the maps. Let's use our cleverness to maybe creep in through the window and alter those maps. You walk into the study quietly and begin moving the maps around. Okay. You realise that you can use the maps to tell a story. You draw additional pictures here and there, rearranging the maps to show the human what she got wrong. Keep going. You draw an artefact where Blots dug one up, then make a spiral where you got lost that time. Yes, this will help. Now put it back. The human soon wakes up. You watch through the window as she studies to change maps. After a while, she wipes a tear from one eye. You've gotten through. Okay. Right, two days left. I'm a bit worried that this is all going to go wrong all of a sudden. Let's do a politic then. Um, you can do peering around the corner as well. Why not? Gobclaws unlo unrolls a big map. Okay, a lot of maps going on. Point uh, showing the surrounding region. She points one pincer at a series of red circles. We've been here before a little bit, I think. These are places where I've seen humans drop things. I think we should put garbage cans there. Okay, why or who cares? Okay, why? Gobclaw says, so we can harvest the things they drop. Then we can study them and understand them better. Okay, question the plan but be open to it. Oh, great. Help her develop the plan. Requires cleverness. Okay, let's go down that route. You get things in order and help Gobclaws arrange the cans so they'll be easier to collect later. Yay, organisation! You and Gobclaws sneak through the woods to the new designated human evidence collection locations, or decals, and place the extra cans. Decals? Is that supposed to be something that I'm finding amusing? Decals. Okay, yay, acronyms! Almost immediately, humans begin dropping trash into the cans, including many candy wrappers with bits of sweetness still inside. Yay! Licking dirty candy wrappers! Oh, I spend many an evening doing that. It's, a, it's the way forward. Gobclaws prepares a report based on the preliminary findings, and everyone agrees that she is quite clever. And so are you. Yes. Okay. The last day. Can I maintain our relationship with the humans and the monsters altogether? Can I do it? Let's have a hugging monster thing going on. It looks nice. You're splashing through rain gutters when you spy a human on the steps below. She snuffles and sobs into a tissue. A crumpled letter lies beside her. Oh, help the human. You slide down a gutter and squat beside the human. She squeaks then holds very still when you don't attack her. Okay. Yeah. All right. Finally, she says, You want to know why I'm crying? My parents say I must marry Ernst, but I do not love him. I just wish he'd go away. Okay, so help her, no matter how dangerous they may be. Offer to harmlessly scare him away or devour her. Oh no, and I've got one that I'm not very good at. So ferocity, I'm definitely not going to do. I'm not going to eat the girl because that is going to very much negatively affect that rating. I'm going to have to try and do the bravery one and hope I don't mess it up and bring this down. Because 100, 100 is, is perfect. That is the perfect result I could hope for. Let's try our bravery roll. No! No! <laughs> The last day I lost it. Lost one. That's really irritating. You enter the human house where two older humans are eating dinner. They see you and jump up screaming. You lose your nerve. The young human starts crying again as you flee. Okay. Oh, I bet that's a special ending if you get 100 on both. And we lost it on the on a bravery roll. Because we had either bravery or ferocity. So our last one was the two things that we're bad at. Any of those other things I bet would have been fine. Oh, well. oh no, we've got another day left, have we? Hang on, it says no days left, but we still have journey to come. Can we rectify this? No. No, we can't. Okay. Well, never mind. It, I mean, 100% and 99% is pretty good. I mean, uh, it's 1% off of perfect. So we should be okay. 
As you walk through Portent Square, you think on your past. Life hasn't always been easy, but you've built up your reputation. You are quite well respected. Yes, well respected indeed. Though monsters have always feared and loathed humans in the past, you, your, oh, sorry, your work toward improving relations has paid off. Monsters have come to respect and like them. Well done. Grand. Meanwhile, humans, who once hated all monster kind, have come to understand that monsters aren't terrible, evil things. Rumour has it that humans think pretty well of you. Okay. Shattering your reverie, a terrible commotion erupts. Elders and younger monsters alike are milling about in a great mob. What is it? Blots drops from a nearby roof. Humans! Humans are coming this way! Blistery says, That's wonderful, we can talk to them. It's true. Relations have been warming up. Both monsters and humans meet deep in the whale mist. There is considerable shuffling of feet and paws. Everyone wants to talk, but nobody wants to make the first move. If only some monster were to speak up. It's going to be me! Yes, if only. A few of the other elders are looking at you, strangely enough. Okay, slash one in the throat to show them who's boss. All welcome the humans as friends. Well, I think we know what we're going to do. Hey, human friends! Everyone, breathe a sigh of relief as you put your best claw forwards. It's the first step of a long journey, a journey on which monster and human will cooperate in all things. Oh, we've become buddies! What happened next? The end. Oh, look, and we built a lovely city full of monies and riches and teeth. That's fine. Okay, bags of teeth. That's good. And there's coins and there's a human and there's a monster and we're living together. And that is the end. And so monsters and humans worked, lived and played together for many happy generations to come. Hooray for the future. Hooray, hooray, monster. You did it. You did it, weird crab with pointy feet, shell claw, monster crab, monster thing. Good job. The end. So my final personality. Yeah, was that wasn't that wasn't brilliant, was it? I wonder if there is a special ending. I wonder if we've missed out on a super special ending where it's 100 100. I do wonder if we're that, you know, that last little bit has thwarted us, which is just really frustrating because it was perfect for so long. It was perfect for so long. I just love to skip those days. No, I don't need to do any more adventuring. Relations are great. I'm just going to go to bed. Goodbye. But there we go. So we're pretty good. We were pretty good, apart from ferocity. We're not a very ferocious monster, but there we go. You know, diplomacy won through. Yep. Oh, there we go. And that's one of the endings. Ah, so universal prosperity. You dare to find the narrow gap between fear and hate. Now humans and monsters work together for the benefit of all. Hang on. So are these shadowy things different endings? So there's, including my one, says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 different endings. Oh my goodness. That is quite a lot. That is far more than I thought that was going to be. So there is quite a bit of replayability in this then. There is a lot of replayability in this game. Because you could go back and do that differently. You could go back and be a really horrible monster. Or you could go back and be in the middle. Or you could go back and try and... On that last bit, if you become an elder, you could try and have the monsters really liking the humans, but the humans not liking the monsters and the other way round, that kind of thing. So yeah, how interesting. But there you go, that was fun. That was fun. And it was, yeah, a lot more content than I was expecting. If I'm completely honest, I thought this would be done in maybe an hour and it would just be good for Halloween. But do you know what? After we would played it on Halloween, I then could not just abandon it. I had to then finish the tale of Monster and it finished rather well. I hope you agree. It finished all very lovely. Finished down, down here and we're all living together in an age of prosperity and it's all very nice. And we are indeed the loveliest monster, which is kind of what we set out to do really. We kind of wanted to be a nice monster to bring humans and monsters together and we have succeeded and we've got big bags of golden teeth. So there you go. <laughs> What's not to like? Hopefully you did enjoy this. If you did, please do leave a like and also please do subscribe as always. As always, I whiffle on about this at the end, but please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the bumps that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Zombie, kill, kill it, kill it, bash it in the head. How do I pick the chairs up again? I've forgotten. Ah, like that. Oh, good shot, sir. I know your brain's there. Could you? Oh, sorry, I've just stood on your brain. Fuel in the toilet. Yep. Biofuel, I suppose. Oh, 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 I should, should not have done that. Go and wrestle the moose. Why not? I don't think I've ever said that before to anyone ever.